So with 2022 wrapping up, I wanted to take some time for the first time ever and talk about some of my favorite games that came out this year. Now, this is my first time ever putting a list together and all of the notes and everything. So I might not be the best at this, but I'm at least trying. I wanted to do something a little bit different. So uh, I guess with that said, we're going to get straight into some of my favorite games for 2022. Now, for me personally, one of my favorite games that came out this year at number 10 would be Sniper Elite 5. Uh, this is the first Sniper Elite game that I played in years. The game was, I haven't really got around to three or four. I always wanted to, but this game, for whatever reason, just it, it really kind of captured me. And I think at the time, not much else was really out. But the game ended up being pretty challenging at times. I, there was a good amount of co-op. So me and my buddy Soldier Pad played a actually most of the campaign together. Uh, once he caught up to me after like the first three missions, we went through those and it was actually pretty cool. I've never really been a completionist when it comes to objectives, but this one, I ended up doing a lot of the optional objectives, mainly because if you did them, they would set you up for like an awesome assassin style kill with the sniper. Of course, those cutscenes always look great. Uh, it's very similar to like Hitman series or the latest Hitman games, if you know any of those. Even the multiplayer was pretty cool too. Just checking out that and going in, you know, they had an evasion style mode. And uh, that was one of the first times I probably ever jumped in and actually invaded other players <laughs> and leveled up. Uh, so, yeah, that's the first one. Sniper Elite 5. Next up on the list, we have Dying Light 2. The, the coolest thing about Dying Light 2, I think this time around, was really the city that they built and how it had a lot of RPG mechanics. Now, honestly, in the long run, those RPG mechanics uh, for like kind of, there was three factions in the game and you could choose to side with some of them. Now, if you did side with them, it would kind of change the world a little bit. But I think from overall, if I remember correctly, it didn't actually change the overall story by that much. But I, I The one thing I really wish that they kind of did for this game was bring uh, some things from the following DLC for the first game. I really enjoyed that. Uh, it was way ahead of what I uh, I expected at the time. But I mean, overall, I still feel like this was a good follow up to the original Dying Light. Uh, there was a lot of really cool uh, characters themselves, dialogue options, and just in general, like it was cool to see them do something different. And co-op itself was was a lot of fun for this game. So Oh yeah, one other thing I wanted to mention about Dying Light, the free running was a ton of fun. A lot of the weapons too, uh, they did take everything they did with, you know, crafting weapons and creating some cool stuff from the first game and expanded on it. Uh, but man, when I when I say the free running, like I absolutely loved running around that city, using the glider to get all over the place. It was a ton of fun. So next up on the list, we've got Lego Skywalker Saga. Now, I absolutely love the original game back in the day. Uh, that was one of those games where I played it over and over again, creating my own Lego character in the cantina, all of that. But th with this game, they took everything from the actual movies, and I feel like they did a really good job in Lego format with it being fully vo voice acted. You could go anywhere from Coruscant to Mustafar and explore every little crevice of the locations and there's just so much the biggest thing that i wish that they added to this game was honestly online multiplayer if they added that that would have expanded and just added so many more possibilities playing with a friend online me and my buddy soldier pat wanted to do a lot of co-op but unfortunately it was only local Aside from that, though, I mean, it was a ton of fun for the combat. I feel like they did a really good job with uh, handling how to shoot the weapons, Skywalker Saga, and I'm really happy that this came out this year. Next up on the list and number seven, we've got High on Life. Now, this is one of the funniest games I've played in a very long time. There's a lot of moments for this where it actually kind of reminded me for Borderlands back in the day, like 20, 2010. Uh, with a different like kind of sense of humor this time around. Um, I've never really been the biggest Rick and Morty fan, but honestly, like over the last year or two, I did watch a few episodes 
and I, I think they're pretty unique and and different. And I definitely understand why some people absolutely love it. Um, it was created by the same creator as Rick and Morty, Justin Roiland, I believe his name is. And uh, even the first gun that you get is actually exactly voice acted like Morty. Uh, so if you are a Rick and Morty fan, I highly, highly suggest this game. The combat was actually a good amount of fun. Each new Gatling gun that you got unlocks some cool new abilities to, to fight against the enemies. It's definitely a unique story and game in itself, but there's tons and tons of Easter eggs to pop culture and even fourth wall breaking jokes. Um, and it, it just at times it really did get sort of dark <laughs> uh, on a funny level and on a serious level. Okay, next up, we've got Marvel Snap. I was not expecting this game to really ever be on my type of list, but uh, this came out of nowhere and it's probably one of the best uh, card games I've ever really played. So if you don't know how Marvel Snap works, essentially, or what it is, it's a Marvel card game where there's tons and tons of cool artwork. Uh, the overall goal is whoever has two out of three locations, like the most power at that location wins the game. But the thing that's really cool about this is matches are really, really fast. Like they take anywhere from six to eight minutes, like maximum. And once you finish one, you're into the next. Uh, but even today, like I, I jumped in door towards the end of Symbiote Invasion. And I so I pull out my phone, play a few matches like right before bed or right when I'm like sitting down and I got nothing to do for like a few minutes. It's great for that quick get in, get out. Go back to whatever you're doing and and that's really why marvel snaps here all right we are halfway through the list and next up is evil west now a lot of people were calling this the cowboy uh god of war style game and honestly yeah i do feel like that is a pretty good equivalent for it uh the combat at times felt amazing and just definitely from being off the high of god of war ragnarok uh you definitely could see those those references I got some huge throwbacks to the Order 1886 and Remnant. Um, sometimes during the combat with the guns and just the overall story, it really reminded me of those two games. They did a pretty good job with the upgrading system. You're constantly getting new steampunk abilities, new, new electric abilities, all these types of, of cool, really neat styles to shred and absolutely destroy vampires and demons alike uh it was just really it, it really came out of nowhere for me so these next two games were really close for me position wise but i ended up putting uh gotham knights in my number four now of course i am a huge dc fan so this had to be on my list overall i i pretty much enjoyed the story it wasn't that crazy but i think it was good uh, you know, having Bruce Wayne dead and having the characters take up their own personality and kind of experiencing with Batman being gone, uh, it, it definitely was a really cool setting that they started with. Uh, combat on, you know, when it first started, it was very slow and it did seem like it dragged. But as you got to like level 30, I, once you have the momentum abilities, I feel like that part there actually did a pretty good job at it. Uh, from there, you were constantly tagging out and using different momentum abilities as Red Hood, Nightwing, Batgirl. Uh, pretty much all of them had their own unique style. And for the combat itself, although I wish it had a traditional counter, I did feel like they did a good job with having a parry and then going in and attacking once again, um, kind of as a quick attack rather than just a traditional counter. Some other thoughts I had about Gotham Knights was I actually like the city. I, I like the city of Gotham. Uh, there were some performance issues, definitely. And I, I think that's kind of why it ended up in this spot for me personally compared to the next game. But I played as Red Hood. And as you were running around the city, like it, it was it looked pretty good at times. There was a lot of world building for this game. Surprisingly, you could find constantly find books and uh, locations that mentioned other DC characters. So overall, I, I feel like they did a pretty good job at setting it up. The biggest downside or uh, failure of the game was the launch performance and still having that 30 FPS on console. I still don't really think that's next gen. 
I feel like most people will kind of agree with that, but I mean, it, it is what it is. And overall, I, I still really enjoyed the thing, the game itself. One final note I wanted to make for this game is they had some of the best costumes I think we've ever seen in video game format in a very long time. All right, we are getting down to the last three. So on third place, we got Modern Warfare 2. This is the first Call of Duty game that I bought since like Modern, or no, World War II released. Uh, I think this game honestly lived up. It wasn't a one for one for Modern Warfare 2, like 2011 or no, 2009. But it was its own unique style of campaign, and there were some really badass moments. The characters themselves, uh, even though they are new iterations, I feel like they did a pretty good job with the voice acting, the cutscenes. I mean, this game was obviously highly, highly developed for uh, every single graphical part of the story, and they they pretty good. They did a pretty good job. The biggest surprise I think that I also had for Modern Warfare 2 was actually I cared about the multiplayer. Uh, I've always been a Battlefield fan and Battlefield has always been my area or genre when it comes to first person shooters. Uh, but for this one, it actually felt a little bit different. Uh, the ground war and invasion modes were a ton of fun. And for the first time in years... I actually leveled up to the max level and completed majority of the battle pass. That never happens for me in Call of Duty games. And it just that in itself, I feel like is very telling of how much I enjoyed Invasion and Ground War. We are getting into the last final two games for 2022. And the next one being Marvel's Midnight Suns. This originally was my most anticipated game of the year. I was a little bit skeptical of the combat, but overall it was pretty satisfying, especially when you got the right cards and you had the perfect amount to get multiple KOs in one hit. It was very, very satisfying. The story itself, it did start out a little bit slow and it was a little cheesy for the writing. I absolutely agree uh, with a lot of people for what they said for the voice acting, but at the same time, I feel like that's very typical when it comes to Marvel games in general for entertainment wise. Uh, the middle of the game and towards the end of it, I think is where the, the story really did end up shining. I really ended up enjoying the Hunter as a character with the DLC coming out with new characters getting added in season one. I hope that they actually develop and continue on this, this path that they got. And here we are with number one, numero uno. We've got God of War Ragnarok. To be straight up with you all, this is the reason I got a PS5 or one of. Of course, there are other games like Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine, and I'm sure some others that will eventually come out. But honestly, God of War Ragnarok, from playing the first game, this is one of those where I could absolutely not miss out day one. It continues the story of Kratos, who obviously is one of the most badass villains you ever get to play in video games. But this time around, of course, taking off from 2018, you're not only still continuing to struggle with Atreus teaching him life lessons, but he also wants to spend the time, as much time as he can with him because he doesn't know how much time he has left. With a, a legacy like Kratos, you don't know when your end is coming. And it was very, very good to see, you know, him and Brock and, and kind of get to know each character a whole lot more than we did in the first game. That in itself, like that is why I play video games. These are the types of games that I absolutely love, whether it's the story, the combat, like it hit every single field of video game greatness at that top level. Like I absolutely loved it. The other thing too with God of War Ragnarok is I uh, there's a lot of really cool side objectives and different locations that you could go that you really didn't have those type of environments in the first time around. In fact, there's an entire separate area that you can't even get to or know about unless if you do one specific side mission and it opens it up and it's honestly so cool. There's even a hidden boss there. Like I mean there's hidden bosses throughout the entire game. But it was probably one of the coolest hidden bosses. 
Uh, so it's stuff like that. Like this was a fully packaged game and Kratos himself, you know, Christopher Judge, Atreus, uh, everyone in it, Odin, even Thor, they were all badass and different iterations of characters that we really haven't seen before. And I really, really like how they expanded on it. And this honestly is probably this this right here is the reason it is my number one on this entire list. So that is my list, but there are a few others that I wanted to mention. I know most of you are probably saying, where the hell is Elden Ring? What? How is that not on your list? For me, I did not finish the game. I've never really been the biggest fan of Soulsborne games or Souls-like games. For me, Elden Ring kind of became that game where I ended up actually watching more streams of it than I actually played myself. At the time, it was very, very saturated. Like everyone was playing it, obviously, and everyone was streaming it, making content. So for me, I was like, yeah, I might as well kind of take what I get. And it, I did also reach that difficulty cap for me, um, not knowing where to go. Of course, there are plenty of guides out there. But I, I said, you know what? I'm just going to put it down. I'll keep watching content. The game in itself, too, was very, very long. I saw how much expansive areas that it had and so many different possibilities of ways you could do things, uh, different builds. So I wanted to at least take some time and say I recognize the beauty of how much that game had and how expansive it was. But for me, it just didn't reach the list. And I hope that, you know, that doesn't kill anybody that, you know, doesn't agree with me on that one. And one final honorable mention I wanted to make, although it's not a game that came out in 2022, Spider-Man games, both the original Spider-Man PS4 and Spider-Man Miles Morales came out on PC this year. That is something I never, ever, ever expected to happen, but man, am I happy it did. I actually played both the games on mouse and keyboard all the way through, and it surprisingly felt great. Uh, the first time I ever experienced either one of those was on my PS4. So playing it on PC and being able to kind of almost maximize the settings and see it differently and have RTX potentially enabled, but not really performance wise work the best at the time because my computer couldn't really handle it. Uh, just having that and being able to, you know, have the freedom of playing it on mouse and keyboard, obviously loved it. And I can't wait to see with Spider-Man 2 next year, although it's going to be on PS5. So that is my list. Uh, as far as 2022 goes, uh, there was a lot of great games. Of course, there are tons and tons more that came out this year that I never really got around to. But either way, still happy for what I did experience and get to play. Sorry if my room doesn't look as perfect as it does in the little box that it does while on streams. Uh, I want to do something a little bit different. Just sit down, have a conversation talk about some games I really liked and you know if you guys enjoyed this video and if you did make it this far in definitely let me know in the comments like if there's anything you agree or you have suggestions for these type of videos please let me know because I, I want to try to do more of these in 2023 um, I'm also going to be working on an upcoming games for 2023 video so keep on uh, a lookout for that there's Kiara making her bed <laughs> that's pretty much everything i got i'm out of breath from recording so thank you all for watching as always hit that like button subscribe let me know any comments once again and i'll see you all in the next one peace also stop by the stream sometime